Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Second video, paper 1 to November 23. Question number 29, uh, a very nice and an easy question. The diagram shows an anterior view of the vertical sections to the human heart. Now, what is one? One is a pulmonary artery. Why? Because it's arising from the right ventricle. So it's arising from here. So this has to be the pulmonary artery, which is going to the lungs. Now, the only one answer which is correct for one is this one. So just getting this one right, I would quickly say I wouldn't take even 10 seconds on it. And I would say, okay, one is pulmonary artery. There's only one answer. It says one is pulmonary artery. The rest of it are all is wrong. Aorta, pulmonary vein and all is wrong. So even one will decide. The rest of it all fits in. I would do it like this. So two, two is semilunar valves. Three is atrioventricular valve. And four is the vena cava. These are the vena cavas which are coming in superior and inferior vena cava. Question number 30. What does the inner layer of veins and capillaries contain? It's the endothelium, nothing else. Inner layer. The inner layer is the endothelium, which is the flattened layer of cells, which is present in all vessels. Arteries, veins, and capillaries. And capillaries, in fact, that's the only thing present. Nothing else is present. Now 31, the graph shows the changes in blood pressure and water potential across a blood capillary from the arterial end to the venous end. So, okay, blood pressure, arterial end, venous end, look at it very carefully, distance, the blood pressure is decreasing and the water potential of the plasma, then the water potential, so which could result in an accumulation of excess tissue fluid. So that means it is not returning back. Why would it not return back? The answer is an increase in blood pressure. More blood is coming out, so less is returning. So increase in blood pressure. The rest of it is all wrong. Decrease in blood pressure, a decrease in the concentration of proteins in the tissue fluid. Proteins do not leak out into the tissue fluid. An increase of large proteins, if this increase, of course, that is, a, that is better. In fact, if there's a decrease, that would have been resulted in. If this was a decrease in the concentration of large proteins, this would have also resulted in uh, accumulation of excess tissue fluid. Question number 32, which statement is correct about a red blood cell that has just entered a capillary in a respiring muscle? Respiring muscle means taking in oxygen and uh, more carbon dioxide is being produced. So more carbon dioxide means more carb amino hemoglobin. 5% of it is in the plasma, 10% as carb amino hemoglobin and the rest of it is bicarbonate ions. So the rest of it is all wrong. Question number 33, and again, one of the graphs which you all hate and you all don't like very much. You don't like it at the O levels, nor do you like it in the A levels. The graph shows some blood pressure changes that occur in a human during one cardiac cycle. Now, when does systole start and end in the right atrium and in the right ventricle? Now, you see the pressure is in the aorta. So this is, we are going to talking about the ventricle, pressure in the left ventricle. And here we have pressure in the left atrium. So what we have to understand is that it has got to be something to do with the pressure in the left atrium. So when does systole start? In the right atrium, when does systole start? It starts at T. So systole starts here. So it starts at T, systole ends at V. And then in the right ventricle, in the right ventricle, the systole starts at V and the systole ends at X. So the answer is A, but why? You've got to understand why. You see, in the right ventricle, you see the blood is going to be pumped into the pulmonary artery. We're talking of the right ventricle. In the right atrium and in the right ventricle, we're talking of the pressure that systole ends at X. Because what has happened at X? The ventricle has relaxed. And now blood is going in there. 
of course, if it's the left ventricle, but here we're talking about the right uh, ventricle, so then it has to be going into the pulmonary artery. You see, the point to remember here is that both the atria contract, blood goes into the ventricles. Both the ventricles contract at the same time. So if they're giving you some information about the left ventricle is the same as the right ventricle. So both the atria contract at the same time and then push the blood into the ventricles and then the, the atrioventricular valves close and both the ventricles contract at the same time. And blood is forced out into the, from the left ventricle into the air time, from the right ventricle into the pulmonary artery. So you've got to remember it, that this is both happening very simultaneously. Right atrium and right ventricle is the same as left atrium and the left ventricle. They're both contracting at the same time and they are both relaxing at the same time. Question number 34, which statements about all bronchioles are correct? Two and four, three only. They have epithelial cells and they have muscle tissue. Goblet cells are not present in all bronchioles. Question number 35, what is shown in the electron micrograph? They've shown this to you, they've shown us electron micrograph, it is 850 times magnified. Now it says, the choice is here. It's either a scanning or a transmission. What is a scanning electron micrograph? It just scans the surface. You can just see the surface configuration. Well, like when you're flying over, uh, when your plane is coming to land, you can see the roofs of all the houses. That's scanning. You can just see the top of it, the top surface configuration. So first of all, you've got to decide whether it is showing you the surface or is it showing you the inside of it. Scanning electron is showing you the surface. You can see a whole lot of this stuff here on top of it. What is this? All these things. You can see all this in, on the top. So it has to be scanning. It has to be either A or B. Can't be transmission. So that's the first thing that you note that it is only a scanning one. Now, what is it showing in the scanning? Is it showing the bronchial epithelium and the lymphocytes? No, these are not the lymphocytes. These are red blood cells. They're very uniform and they're red blood cells. So the answer is B. It's a scanning electron micrograph of lung, squamous epithelium, and red blood cells. Question number 36, which statement correctly describes infectious diseases? They are diseases caused by environmental factors that are not passed on, that's rubbish and not environmental factors. They are diseases caused by fault of the DNA, that's genetic defects, no, that's not a disease. Infectious diseases are those which are, contain a pathogen and they can be transferred from one person to another. They are caused by a lack of nutrient. No, that is nutritional disease, so this is wrong. The only answer correct is D. They are diseases caused by a pathogen, such as bacterium, fungus, protoctist, or virus, and can be passed from one person to another. Question number 37, organism X produces molecule Y, which blocks the activity of 70S ribosomes. You know 70S ribosomes are present where? In bacteria, in mitochondria, in chloroplasts. An experiment was carried out to investigate the effect of Y. So organism X produces molecule Y on bacterial cells. So we want to see whether Y kills bacterial cells or it does not kill bacterial cells. An agar plate with bacteria. So this is all got bacteria here growing. An agar plate with bacteria growing all over its surface. So this is the bacterial growth, which is shown in this gray color, which I am now marking in red. An agar plate with bacteria growing all over the surface had four wells cut into the agar. Different substances were added to each well and the agar plate with bacteria was incubated for a week. The diagram shows the results after a week. Intact cell of organism X, none of the bacteria have been destroyed. The bacteria are still there, hale and hearty. Distal water did have no effect. Commonly used antibiotic destroyed the bacteria and we've got a clear area here. So the bacteria are all killed here. And concentrated solution made from the cytoplasm of lots of organism X cells. So we cut up the organism X cell, somehow destroyed the cell membrane and cell wall or whatever. And we got the contents, the cytoplasm, and it resulted in a lot of bacteria being killed. Now, I've explained this to you. Please do this like this in the exam. Which conclusions can be made from these results? 
Molecule Y functions as an antibiotic? Yes. Molecule Y cannot be released from cells from organism X. Yes, this was the intact one, so nothing would have happened there. Molecule Y would also affect the synthesis of proteins from nuclear DNA in a human cell. No. Why no? There's no such thing. We've not even tested it on human cells. And that was the that was the one that was the point that you could have picked up and immediately said that is why the answer is B. There was no information on how it, it worked on human cells. It says molecule Y would also affect the sense of proteins from nuclear DNA in a human cell. Why? There's nothing here from this. It says what conclusions can be made from these results. These results do not tell us anything about human cell. So that is how you realize that the answer was B. Question number 38, a patient has had repeated infections from the same pathogen over a few months. This patient has been treated with the same antibiotic on each occasion. So it has to be a bacterial disease because antibiotics do not work on viruses. Which treatment could prevent an increase in the antibiotic resistance of the pathogen? A narrow spectrum antibiotic to treat a non-cellular pathogen. Non-cellular pathogen is a virus. We don't give antibiotics in viral diseases. A repeat prescription for the same antibiotic at a higher dose. Why? If it isn't working in a small dose, it won't work at a higher dose also. So this is wrong. Then C is correct. A specific antibiotic after testing for the pathogen. So you test the pathogen, do a culture and sensitivity and see, okay, which bacteria is it? Which antibiotic is going to kill it? That is the only way that you can do it. You can just keep on trying this antibiotic, that antibiotic, and you will make a mess of it. And then, of course, it says D. Why was D wrong? A wide spectrum antibiotic to treat different strains of the pathogen. No, they aren't different strains of the pathogen. There could be, there could be one specific bacteria, which is now, of course, in large numbers and is causing an infection. So you can't be giving a wide spectrum of antibiotic and say, okay, well, I mean, like you fire a gun to kill a fly. That's a big joke. Question number 39. Question number 39, a patient with kidney failure can be given a kidney transplant. In a kidney transplant, a healthy kidney is taken from another person and put into the patient's body. Sometimes the donated kidney cells are killed by the patient's body in this primary immune response. T lymphocytes bind to antigens on the donated kidney cells that are activated. The statement describes the next stages of the primary immune response. Activated T lymphocytes secrete cytokines. B lymphocytes differentiate into plasma cells and make antibodies. T killer cells bind to antigens on the donor kidney cells. T killer cells release toxins that destroy the donor kidney cells. Uh, T lymphocytes multiply by mitosis and differentiate into T killer cells. Now, uh, which order correctly explains how the donor kidney cells are killed? Number one, what will happen in the beginning? It says T lymphocytes bind to antigens and are activated. So it has to be activated T cells release cytokines, one. Then T lymphocytes multiply by di di and differentiate into T killer cells. Then T killer cells bind to antigen on the kidney, on the donor kidney cells. And then T killer cells release toxin that destroys. So it is, answer is B. Question number 40, the diagram shows the simplified structure of an antibody. Which statement is correct? U and S allow the antibody to bind to two different antigens. That's wrong. They bind to the same antigen. V allows the antibody, V is the hinge region, allows the antibody to be flexible to bind to two antigens. Yes, that's the answer. Why C wrong? W can bind to one specific antigen. No, W does not bind to the antigen. It binds to the cell membrane of the phagocyte. This would be the phagocyte. This is the, which is going to bind to that. Uh, so bind to one specific, that's wrong. X can bind. 
with a specific phagocyte receptor. No, W can bind with a phagocyte receptor. X cannot bind with a phagocyte receptor. This is the phagocyte receptor where it binds the, the base of the antibody. Thank you very much. This completes your uh, paper 1, 2 of November 23 and we will continue the next MCQ paper in the next few videos.